Welcome back to another video. My name is Abby and today we are talking about how to set an intention. If you like videos like this and you want more like them, all you gotta do, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, it'll let you know whenever new videos come out. And if you really wanna show support cause you love this video, go ahead and click that like button. It really helps to spread this information. And if you learn something from it, if you wanna share something, I always love and appreciate your feedback. So leave that in the comments below. So back to the video, how to set an intention. If you've watched other of my videos, I love to use etymology, which is essentially where the word came from. It helps get to the root of the word so we can clear some of that cloudy and murky understanding of what's going on. So intention, actually, if we break it down to intend, it means to direct attention to, attention with an A, to stretch out. So essentially stretching out your attention. It has to do with your purpose, your design, the plan. So whatever you're having an intention about, whether it be about your job, about finding a partner, about at a certain amount of abundance, you have an intention. It's basically what is your plan? What is the design that you have for it? And a lot of times intention gets mixed up with desire. So I want to break down what desire is. Desire is actually longing for, it's wishing for, it's craving something. So in the example of money, you would be desiring say a hundred thousand dollars whereas intention you would have a plan you would be putting your attention with an a towards that amount of money stretching your mind's capacity to include that amount of money so yes you can start with desire the longing for the wanting and then you move into intention so that you can actually start putting the, the action in place, putting the plan in place to get that to be part of your experience naturally. I hope you can see that when we talk about intention versus desire, which I have another video about, but you can see that intention is more of an action-based thing, whereas desire is more passive. It's something you're waiting for and actually in the origin and in the etymology of the word, it's waiting for something to happen, basically waiting on the stars for your want to come to you. So another way to say that is that when you have intentions, you start to set them in your life. You start to have those designs, those plans where you're moving towards them. You're stretching out your attention to include those things in them. That is more of a being state, which we're going to talk more about this in a little bit. Whereas you look at desire and that's going to be more about having that separation. You want something and it is outside of your experience right now. You're wanting this amount of money. You're wanting this relationship. You're wanting this career, but it is outside of you. So you long for it. You crave it. And in that electromagnetic signature, in that state of being, you are with out it so there is a resistance there that in your experience there is a separation between you and that thing that experience that circumstance that you want however you are continuing to send out the thoughts and feelings the electromagnetic signature which is what you're going to get in your external situation external circumstances what is essentially what's happening right now you're wanting something there's separation you're desiring it but you continue to send out that you're separate from it because you don't long for something you already have you have it you're grateful you're happy it is a part of you naturally part of your experience so you don't have to long for it because you are with it so you can start to see the big difference between between your states of being on being it with that intention stretching out your attention to include it versus the desire which is staying separate from it even just this small amount of understanding will really help you to see how is it that you're thinking about this thing you're watching this video because you're wanting to know more about intentions what intentions are you wanting to have in your life? And really those intentions are paving the road for that new external situation to be echoed back to you. So what is it that you're wanting? Starting to ask yourself, how is it that you are relating to the situation? Are you separating? Are you continuing to stay in desire? Or are you starting to stretch your mind? and attention to include it. And Dr. Joe Dispenza actually says that as you start to say, okay, you look out into the world and you start to ask yourself open-ended questions such as, who would I need to be? And how would it feel for me to be in that state of abundance, for me to have that $100,000, for me to have that secure relationship in my life? Who would I be? How would it feel? Starting to look out into the world and what that's gonna do is gonna allow your CEO 
of your mind, which is your frontal lobe, to go back into pre-existing networks of neurons. Look back through those and say, okay, it's gonna take a bit from here and a bit from there. And it's gonna form a new collection. And essentially that is the intention, that is the plan, that is the design on what it might look like. And as you start moving in that, as you start expanding that attention, you're gonna literally be able to see differently because you're gonna look out into the world for different things. If you've watched other of my videos, I talk about your RAS, your reticular activating system. And what this is, is a filtration system in your mind that basically filters out anything that goes against your identity. And your identity, according to Neville Goddard, essentially is a set of assumptions, what you believe and give consent and permission to be true about yourself. So if it's that you aren't worthy of love, if it's that you aren't good enough to have that amount of money, you will look out into the world through that lens. And so you'll block out everything that would contradict that and you are in alignment, you will find those things that will reflect back to you that who you think you are, who you are really being. That's not because that is what your worth is, that is because that is what you think you are, that is what you're thinking, and that is what you're feeling, and that is your state of being. So as you start to set those intentions and allow your frontal lobe to look out into your pre-existing situations and all the things that you know up until now, which is your past, which is basically your mind is a collection of those things, it's an archive of past experiences, those intentions are gonna put together a new vision. That vision is your intention. It is the potential plan to get you there. You start stretching that out. You start looking to see, okay, well, what if it isn't true? What if I am a value to the world and I can receive money as an exchange, an energetic exchange? I deliver value and therefore money comes back. There's a whole lot of other ways that you can get value back to you, but specifically for the example of money, that is one way to do it. Potentially it's okay well what if I am worthy of a relationship with somebody that I really respect and admire and I can have that secure relationship in my life what would that look like how would I feel who would I be and as you do that you're allowing yourself to expand outside your current psycho cybernetic mechanism and all that is is essentially a thermostat in your head which says okay you are in the state right now. Everything that is in your life right now is essentially just reflecting back a part of your unconscious, your deep subconscious beliefs about yourself. So if there's something in your life you're not liking right now, you can look at it in a more objective way and ask, what would somebody need to believe about themselves in order to find this? If it's continually getting rejected, okay, is it possible that I could be rejecting myself? Is it possible that I learned that early on and I just adopted that belief thinking that that was a part of me, thinking that that was what was real and true for me and I adopt that and I move in the world that way? What if it's true that I am lovable? And you start to use your external circumstances as information to investigate inside of yourself and understand, okay, what is it that you've gone through? What would lead you to feel lack? Were you taught how to feel abundant, how to be abundant? What was your life early on growing up, especially from when you were born to seven years old? What was that experience like? What were you taught about love, about money, about abundance, about your value in the world? And what did you learn from those around you about how to behave in the world? As you start to investigate that, investigate who it is that you are right now, how you move through the world, you can see what your current beliefs are about yourself and then start to ask yourself those open-ended questions such as, who would you need to be? How would it feel? How would you move through the world? That's going to literally expand and stretch your attention. Whatever you put your attention on will grow. Just the same as you went out to a garden and you had a bucket of water. Where you put that water and on what plant you put that water on is what will grow. Just the same as you're, you're continuing to nurture and water those thoughts of lack and scarcity and being unloved, that is what will grow. And when you question them and start to understand where they were formed, you can find that seed of why your behavior continues to be like that. Because most likely, if you're watching this video, you're having a reoccurring situations that continue to make you feel the same way, rejected, unloved, lack, scarce in your life. As you start to see where you've been putting your attention you can then choose to put your attention in a new place to turn your attention from where it's been and put it into where you want to go. Another way to say this is to say what Dr. Joe Dispenza's work talks about a lot is to no longer be defined by the past and what has happened to you, but to shift your attention 
through your intentions into who it is that you want to be, investing in your future. And as Neville Goddard says, living in the end, thinking from the version of you that you desire to be, that experiences, those circumstances, thinking who would you need to be? How would you move through the world? How would you think? Everything you can, assuming that that has happened right now. The only thing standing in your way is giving yourself to permission to start being that version of you right now. And the state of being is how you think and how you feel. A great way to do this is to spend the last moments before you go to sleep feeling that, starting to use your imagination to visualize and mentally rehearse as Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about. And right as you're waking up, spend the first 10 to 15 minutes meditating and tapping into that feeling. Again, as Neville Goddard says, the feeling is a secret. Why? Because whatever you feel to be true in your body, your subconscious accepts as truth. That means that if you're feeling that truth, that it is real, right now your body does not know the difference between something that's vividly imagined and a real experience so essentially you are putting in repetitions of you already experiencing that meaning that in your mind if somebody scanned your brain neurologically it would look like you've already experienced that you can then actually have gratitude for that experience even though it hasn't happened yet and dr. Joe says that is the greatest state of receivership we know that thinking and feeling if you're thinking and feeling that you've already experienced this the quantum field is going to give you a reflection of that state of being. You do not need to wait for something outside of you to change to feel grateful. That is an Etonian way of seeing things. That is the same as looking into a mirror and not having anything in your hands and waiting for that mirror to see the reflection of the apple before you eat the apple. You know that you have to have an apple in your hand in order to see the reflection of the apple in your hand. The same thing is happening. You need to feel whole and complete. You need to feel abundant. You need to feel worthy. And then you will see that expressed and reflected back in your external reality. You deserve whatever it is that is filling your heart right now. And while you're watching this video of intention, start to stretch out your attention. Start to ask yourself who it is that you want to be, who it is that you need to be to experience that wish that you want to be fulfilled. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe. If you haven't done so already, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.